Hello, so we're now in winter and the uh, temperature is right down. In fact, we had frost on the boat this morning and uh, yeah, it's a very still, calm day. Um, water temperature is about seven degrees, so chilly. Um, there's snow on the moors. It's uh, yeah, it's the time of year where unfortunately I've got to change the dirty stuff. I've got to put the lures away and um, switch to bait and try and target those, uh, those bottom feeders. So we're on, out on the estuary today. Um, it's, uh, it's just past low tide at the moment, it's just started to flood. Um, and we're gonna be fishing all of the incoming. So uh, we've got a nice tide today, even though it is a small one, it's a 4.9 meter tide. Um, so we're gonna fish the incoming with a variety of baits, hard on the bottom. Uh, we're going to be fishing at anchor and hopefully we can find um, a few of the, the local species here. There's always a chance of whiting, pouting, conger, dogfish and then if you're lucky you might be able to extend that to ray. Um, the odd cod, not too common unfortunately but there are a few and uh, even bass but um, like I said it's quite cold so um, not so likely in the bass fan but you just never know. So we're going to get out there now, um, set up as the usual. Hydrus, IBF Hydrus 3.7 meter with the air deck, hats and 20 horsepower, and all the other extras. So, uh, yeah, let's get launched, get some baits in the water, and see what we can find. So, my bait fishing knowledge is quite limited, and I only really um, turn to bait fishing in the winter months all when there's certain species that I can catch on lures because I love that lure fishing. Um, but the tactics I'm using today is basically what we always used. Um, they're tried and tested and they work. I'm not saying they're the most effective methods but um, it's just the ones that we use and they're simple. Um, it's fairly generic equipment really for this sort of fishing. Um, rod wise this is just a, a uh, 12 to 20 pound class ugly stick rod. Um, with an Abu Garcia 7 multiplier with a 40 pound braid, nice strong braid because you do get some big congas in this river. Um, and that's coming down to a very simple rig and one that many of you will be familiar with, the running ledger. So that's just a sliding boom there with a 6 ounce grip to hold in the tide um, to a swivel and then about 2 foot of a 25 pound um, mono trace that's down to a frio hook and uh, the bait presentation isn't fantastic that's just a little bit of black lug with a little bit of mackerel um, and the bait's still frozen because it's so cold so it's been hard to bait up and then the other rod is much of the same same class rod just a bigger spinning reel um, only using this because it's the reel I've got same braid same running ledger only difference is slightly bigger bait um, on this one using whole joey mackerel um, nice big bait just to see if there's anything a bit bigger out there I might take it. So yeah, put those out, leave them out to soak, uh, at least we can find them. Okay, so I've got some small knocks from the, uh, from the small bait at the moment. Um, this was with mackerel, a little bit of lug. I expect it's just for the whiting. Um, you get a lot of them up here in the winter. And, uh, they can be good fun when they get to a bigger size and they can be really good eating. Yep, that's the culprit. Small whiting. If you're not familiar, that's actually that's actually got a fair belly on him, so they've been eating well and uh, quite a nice pur pearlescent colour for them. So they've been eating well because when you catch them earlier on in the season, they've, uh, they've got, usually got really skinny bellies, um, which is a good sign. But they've been eating. So yeah, I'll get them in hooks and uh, send them back. Hopefully we can get some big ones. Oh, that's straight in as soon as it hits the bottom. Uh, there's the big rod, so they're not there. But they're all that sort of size where you're not going to get a proper meal out of them. Um, and you know, even if you did 
fillet them, you're not going to get a whole lot of fish off them, unfortunately. Um, which is a shame because some of them are taking the hooks deep. They just seem to be feeding ferociously. Um, it's a good example. He's just you know, he's just wolfed that hook right down, and uh, I've got to get the pliers out to get him off. It's turned into a lovely evening there. Absolutely lovely evening. That calm. You know, sun's out. Fish are feeding. Slightly better bite on the big bait then. We were having a little look at. Yeah, so that was a bite on the bigger one there. Let's have a little look. Make sure those hooks are on properly. Not even bothering with the uh, bait elastic at the moment. Bit lazy, I know, but there's just nothing, nothing big out there. Nothing, no, there's nothing really worth getting too worked up about. Um, arguably, if we moved spots, we might see better results. But oh, we ain't got loads of bait left, so there's no point. Little bait there, I guarantee I'll get a bite within a few minutes. That's what it's like at the moment. Down it goes. I'm just feeling from the moment there, you are straight away. Straight away. It's, uh, it's just yeah, they just stick on the on the bottom at the moment. It's a shame they're small whiting and not a three pound cod. <laughs> That'd be ideal. But uh, yeah, that's what it is. A lot of them. But it's always been the way down here. In the winter, you just get huge numbers of uh, huge numbers of white in. And pick out the bigger fish really you know ones that are ones that are twice twice that size you get good fillets off them and they're you know a bit bigger and they are great eating fish i'll do a cook up and uh really are one of one of the family favorites <laughs> nice one morgan at least it keeps us entertained better than blanking straight away So we're back at the house now, and uh, here's the lovely whiting that we caught um, caught earlier on. So uh, yeah, that's about as small as you want, really. Um, that's that's uh, I think about a foot foot in length, just over, right up to a, a fairly decent sized fish right there. So uh, that will get two really nice fillets off of. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fillet these fish. Um, and then start preparing them and I'm going to show you my way of doing whiting and I really do believe it's one of the tastiest ways to have uh, whiting. So I'm going to fillet them and I'm not going to show you that because uh, my filleting skills are, are not that great and uh, if you want to know how to fillet them <laughs> then watch someone else because I might have to do it. 
but it's acceptable. So I'm going to get those filleted and then we'll get on to prepare them and cook them in. If you've got your uh, whiting filleted, um, what we want to do now is separate the flesh from the skin. Um, I should say that with these whiting, they've been in the fridge um, for two days and I like to leave them in the fridge for two days actually. I find that with a lot of white fish like whiting and pollock, um, leaving them in the fridge for a few days helps to firm the flesh up a little bit. I find sometimes if I eat whiting the day I've caught them, they're almost a little bit mushy. Um, so I always find keeping them in the fridge for a few days will help firm that fish up a bit and it will just stay a bit, it will stay together a bit more when you cook it. So um, yeah, so once you've filleted your whiting, um, you want a really sharp knife for this part. Um, obviously a filleting knife is best, but make do with what you've got. And uh, once you've used your knife for filleting, take it to, um, to a diamond sharpening rod and, and just re-hone the edge because you do want it nice and sharp. So I've just got a bowl of cold water here with all the small fillets in um, just to try and firm them up a bit. So um, to separate the, uh, the um, flesh from the skin, it's quite easy actually. Um, all you've got to do is put your nail on the, uh, on the tail end there and stick that knife, I'll just move along a bit, stick that knife underneath and you'll feel the skin and then you're just running it see running it along the skin there and it might come apart a bit but uh, usually it will stay fairly neat and I'm just rolling that flesh back as I go keep it out of the way and you want to try and keep as close as you can to the skin without cutting through it it can be a little bit challenging um, but we're not we're going to cook the skin so any meat on it is not going to go any flesh on there is not going to go to waste and uh, you should end up with a nice skinless fillet it's not too great but um, put it on a board with some paper towels over and then like I said we'll set the skin aside to cook that up later so yeah I'm going to get through all this lot and then we'll get to the uh, exciting part so now I've got a pile of um, skinless fillets there and uh, also make sure they don't have any bones in. <laughs> and I've got kept all the skins there because we're going to use them. And then here's the ingredients. So I'm going to be making a, um, a batter, um, a beer batter, but with a bit of a sort of curry um, Indian twist to it. And uh, this recipe was shown to me by somebody that I worked who used to work on uh, trawlers. And, uh, so he really did know the best way to catch, uh, cook the fish that they caught. Um, it's very simple, very quick, but it tastes delicious. Um, so I'll go through the ingredients quickly and then we'll whack it together. Um, so, most important ingredient is your flour. Now this is a uh, gram flour, rice uh, rice flour or chickpea flour. Um, it's all pretty similar, different to your plain flour. Um, it's a little bit more coarse and uh, it's just got a nicer flavour to it. It just crisps up a bit better. Um, so uh, yeah, gram, rice or chickpea flour. Um, that's what we're going to be using. So all I'm going to do, there's nothing scientific about this. I'm just going to whack a load in this bowl here and you can see the colour to it, it's a little bit sort of creamy yellow. Um, so I'm just going to whack a load of that in, like so. And then the most important ingredient in all this, the second most important ingredient, is a, a tandoori uh, powder. So you can get this in most supermarkets and uh, it's going to give it a really nice rich sort of curry flavour. Um, and it just yeah it just completely changes um, the fish. It's a really good ingredient um, to add to your batter. So get the lid off on this, and I'm just gonna dash load in. Don't be shy with it because you wanna you wanna get that curry flavour. A bit of a uh, salt just for the taste. The salt, and then finally your lager. Um, and you can do this, you can leave that as it is and do a dry batter and uh, that, that'll be fine. Sometimes a dry batter is quite nice, um, a little bit of a lighter batter. But if you want to make it uh, stick to that fish a bit better and make it extra thick, then uh, yeah, lager is an important ingredient. So, cheers. Okay. And then you're just gonna, I just gauge it by Oh, I really um, what do we for? There it is. And then I'm just gonna start mixing that in. 
and you'll see that tandoori that tandoori uh, seasoning just, just going to turn it a lovely reddish orange colour and you're, you're aiming for a I like to I like to have it a little bit thicker than some of my batter um, but you want it sort of halfway between a, a thick paste and a sort of syrup consistency I find that's almost there um, as you can see that's quite a coarse batter I haven't um, sieved it or anything um, depends how thorough you want to be with it you're welcome to sieve it not going to change the, the uh, flavour of it much but uh, yeah I just like to rough and ready it really gauge it by eye and look at that that's a really nice colour that's what you want to be aiming for a nice sort of reddish um, pinky green colour and uh, you know then you've got plenty of tandoori flavouring in so there you are that's your batter and now it's a simple case getting your fish whacking it in there and just giving it a good coat and we're going to do that with all of this fish whack it all in there's some lovely fillets there and uh, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty just get it all mixed in covered up right I'm gonna work on that and then we're gonna stick it in the fryer I noticed we're doing this outside and uh, that's just to stop a World War 3 breaking up really between the family um, it's nice to do it outside so yeah I've got this big ring burner here um, gas ring burner we've got a big pan of oil heating up there so uh, once you're all bubbling um, you're ready to go pretty much and uh, yeah just uh, you fill it you fill it make sure it's uh, got a nice coating of that batter on I was going to say you can always test to see if your oil's ready by flicking a bit of batter in and if it floats try another bit if it floats like that then you know you're good to go you don't want it sinking and sticking Right, let's uh, get the fillet. Uh, a messy business here. Get your fillet, layer in, and there she goes. And it will float right up. So yeah, we'll go through the others, get them cooked up, and uh, we'll show you the finished result. No real given rule as to how long it will take to cook the fish. Um, I mean, in all honesty, it only needs to be in that oil for a few minutes for the fish to cook through. It's just how crispy you like the batter. Um, but you can take a look at this now and uh, just look at that colour. I mean, I'd say that's about done. 